What's good guys, your boy Hugo the Savage back again for another Marvel review. Moon Knight episode 3. I can't remember the name of this one. I'll have to check it out. I'll drop it in the title. It'll be in the title of the video anyway. But uh, yeah man, quick review of today's episode. Um, finished watching it about an hour ago. Gave it time to set in. Um, another exciting episode. Fun packed. Action packed. Um, followed on straight from the previous episode. Um, set in for this one was... Uh, taking place in Cairo, um, Moon Knight's character. Well, Mark Mark Spector is the uh, the main point of this one. I think Stephen takes a bit of a backseat. The personality of Mark Spector takes over, um, and yeah, man. Um, I mean the the main story around this one is uh, Harrow, the villain, who's a bit of a confused villain as they all are. There's a bit more, you know, is a bit more complex than just being a villain, but his aim is to get to the tomb of uh, Amat and resurrect um, the god. And obviously, Stephen slash Mark, Moon Knight, um, and Kanju are trying to get are trying to stop him from doing that. Um, very interesting this episode because obviously, because Mark's taken over, there is parts in this where he realizes that to get through certain obstacles, he needs the help of Stephen, and he doesn't trust the fact that if he gets the help of Stephen and lets Stephen take the personality over, that he will give it back. He believes that Stephen will just continue being Stephen, which, why wouldn't he? Because obviously Mark is the badass mercenary who is kind of cold-blooded and Stephen is the nicer guy. Um, but obviously, because it's, um, it's taking part in Egypt and he does work in a, in a museum, he does have all the knowledge of Egypt, then it's right that he takes over. So we get this the switch in between. Um, a lot of it is him speaking to uh, Stephen's character in reflections in the mirror of different places and stuff like that. But um, it's dope, man. We get to see him go to almost a court of the gods where Harrow tells a lie. Um, pretty much Mark's character He's snitching on it. He wants to snitch on Harrow's character, saying like, yo, this is what he's doing. Um, and when he brings him through, Harrow manipulates the gods a little bit um, and pretty much says that you want to believe Kondru after what he's done in the past. Um, and also the fact that like his avatar's not a sane man. And then he brings Mark Spector to the court and sits him in front of the gods and they ask him questions. And in the end, they're pretty much saying like, yo, you can't do this what you're trying to do like harold's just out here being an archaeologist doing normal stuff um and we will turn you to stone if you carry on with your foolishness they do turn him to stone yeah that's kind of what they go through to turn him to stone in the end but it's because he was lied to and it's not going to look good because now the stone that they've turned him into is like a stone figure and harrow has it in his hand and he pretty much makes damning statements to let us know that like you made a big mistake, yeah, like everything you failed at before. Because I'm guessing at one point Harrow was the avatar for Kanju and it didn't work out well. So he's basically saying like the mission you sent me on before, we're going to change it up a little bit. And now you turn to stone, I've got you where I want you. So um, this episode, the visuals were great. Um, we had a lot more Moon Knight um, and Mark fighting scenes. Um, and I thought that was incredible. I thought the fighting scenes were dope. It wasn't over the top. Um, they didn't make him like some indestructible badass, but he was a G. There was a little bit of resemblance to Batman, but I don't think they can do much about that. You put a big cape on someone and the hood like that, you're going to have resemblance to it. But the fighting scenes were dope. I thought that even when they changed it to, um, is it Mr. Moon or Mr. Knight? Yeah. When, um, when Steven's character ends up being Moon Knight. And I thought that was quite funny as well. Um, CGI was dope. A few, a few parts where this might just be my my eye where I've picked up a few things and I'm over, I'm nitpicking a little bit and it didn't really bother me but if I'm doing a review I'm going to do it properly um, there's a few parts where he threw the cape and that around and it looked as, it looked CGI but apart from that I thought it was cool um, obviously I gave a few spoilers away there but I want you guys to watch it first to come back and leave a comment um, I will say I think well I can't remember what the guy's character was called in this now I don't want to get it wrong you guys will know what part I'm on about when you see it's when they're trying to get to the uh, esophagus of one of the gods, the man who plays that is. I know that he passed away in January um, due to a skiing accident, so I'll repeat to that guy. 
he was pretty good in it as well. You know, nothing special in it, but he was pretty good in it. But shout out to him and his family. Um, but yeah, it's getting interesting. Bit by bit, it's getting interesting. I missed out a lot there, but like I said, I don't want to give away the whole thing. I just want to give a brief overview of it. Um, but I thought the acting was great. One thing I want to say before I go off is... Um, Oscar Isaac's acting in this particular one was incredible because the scenes where he needs to switch between Mark, Stephen and then obviously Conju takes over but he has to because obviously the voice of Conju is not him but he has to embody when he's talking um, and there's parts where he's been summoned by the gods um, Conju takes over so his body is like almost pervoting to whatever Conju's saying and then he comes back into his own body and then Stephen will take over and he's got the English accent but then Mark will take over and he has to go the the American accent no no obviously that when I know how it is when you're filming you cut scenes and you have to do cut and stuff like that but even still they had to make it flow so it means that some scenes were one and for him to switch between like that I've said this print plenty of times before there's only a few people I've seen it doing incredible my favorite at doing stuff like that it was um James McAvoy in Split and glass i think that's incredible so anyone who can do that big props to you but yeah man that was episode three it's quite crazy because it didn't feel like we're on the third episode it feels like we've been watching it for ages now but i guess because each episode's an hour so it would feel like we've watched a movie i'm really enjoying it once again not much shout outs to the mcu so anyone who's joining it you can watch it um, I've heard, I didn't see any easter eggs for myself but I'll, I'm going to go back and watch it again um, they made a reference to Madripoor when um, they were going to see that guy I just spoke about uh, Madripoor's in Falcon and Winter Soldier I'm sure um, it's the place where it looks like it looks like Tokyo slash Singapore um, with all the lights and stuff and it was where Baron Zemo Falcon and Bucky went I think and they met Claire that character but anyway i'm gonna leave it there enjoy come back let me know what you thought and we'll chop it up i've been your boy good service comment like subscribe and share moon knight <laughs>